Hey creators, today I'm going to show you guys how to use our new Crates Glass plugin, which is part of the LaForge suite. It can be used to create really cool glass effects, similar to the ones that you see in the new iPhone interface. But it can also be used to create really cool psychedelic looking stuff too. Honestly, this is my new favorite plugin, because it's just really versatile. Now, it's a pro effect, but if you have a free account, don't worry, you can still follow along and get a feel for it you'll just have a watermark. Okay, let's get started. So to make this plugin work, you're gonna need three things. First, you need some footage, and I'll just use this really cool free stock footage that I found online. So I'll drag that down and make a new composition. And the next thing we're gonna need, some sort of a shape or anything really that has an alpha channel will work for this. So I'll just draw a quick circle on the canvas like that. It really doesn't matter what you make, we're just trying to learn how this thing works. Next, we need an adjustment layer at the very top and on the adjustment layer, we want to apply the crates glass effect right here. Okay, now I'm gonna hide my shape layer and on the adjustment layer with the glass effect, we're gonna go up to the textures menu and right here where it says glass, I'm gonna change the source layer from layer one to layer two, that white shape layer that I made. And that's really all you need to do to get started. Now you can see that we have a problem. It's actually stretching to the edge of the canvas. And that's because if your layer doesn't fill the entire canvas, it's gonna stretch. So one way we can get around that if you happen to use some footage that isn't the same size or shape as your composition is to right click on the layer that you're using as your source and just go pre-compose. Make sure you move all the attributes to the new composition and press okay. And now it's reading it properly. If I press play, I can see that the footage behind the shape is being distorted as if it's being shown through glass. Now let's dig into this glass plugin and see what it can do. And just for clarity, I'm going to rename my adjustment layer to glass like that. Now the first thing to do when you're using one of our plugins is to just flip through all of the presets to see what kind of things are possible. So right here at the top where it says plugin presets, I'm going to change this to aberration. And we can see we get kind of a softer looking glass, but there's some color being introduced because there's some chromatic aberration around the edges, which looks really cool. The next preset is frosted glass. This one would be great for interfaces if you need some readable text inside the bubble. Speaking of bubble, the next one's called bubble and it looks like a soap bubble. We've got diamond, which has really hard edges. Rim light is also great for interfaces, kind of a minimalist look. Focus is interesting because it blurs the background as if we're looking through a magnifying glass. Emerald is a good preset because it shows you that you can tint the glass to make it look like a gem or stained glass or something like that. Here's liquid glass preset liquid glass macro, and lastly, liquid glass widget. So lots of really cool presets. But if none of them are quite what you're looking for, here's how we can customize it. I'm just gonna go back to the default glass preset and let's take a look at some of these settings. If I open up glass shape, we can increase the bevel width. So if you imagine this being kind of a rounded disc, this changes the depth of the bevel on the glass disc. You can also change the bevel shape, which kind of sharpens it up or rounds it out. Smoothing has a similar effect. There are a few other settings, but we'll come to those in another example. Let's open up glass material. And here we can control the blurring. If you need to blur the image to make sort of an interface with readable text. We also have the index of refraction, Fresnel bias. These are all really technical sounding terms. I encourage you just to play with them and see what they do. But if you need a more technical tutorial on what these are all actually doing, I encourage you to check out our previous video on this plugin. Absorption will tint the glass. There's a checkbox here called use input as absorption. We'll talk about that later. We also have diffuse strength, reflection blur, reflection distance, reflection boost, which is pretty sensitive. Be careful with that one. Aberration is how we add that rainbow effect to the edges of the bubble and gamma. Now, there are a few other settings here that you can play with. I'm not going to go through all of them. I encourage you just to check them out because there's some really cool stuff. Like, for example, you can isolate and blur just the edges if you want to. I'll let you go through all those sliders. But one other setting I want to show you is this one that says only foreground. If I click that, it removes the background and now we can have kind of a crystal ball effect, which is pretty cool. But now that we know how the settings work, let's talk about how we can manipulate the mask to make some really cool effects. So I'm going to hide my glass layer and I'm actually going to delete my shape layer. And let's right click and go new solid. Doesn't matter what color you choose, but I'm going to choose white and I'll put this in between the glass and the background footage. Now on this one, I'm actually going to draw a circular mask. The reason I did that is because the white solid goes all the way to the edge of our composition and so it's the right size and shape and we don't have to pre-compose it like we did with the original version. And what that means is I can draw multiple masks onto the canvas and if I use this as my source for my glass effect, then I can manipulate these masks in real time and I'll show you what I mean. So let's hide our white solid layer and turn our glass layer back on 
And then on the glass layer, I'm gonna go to the textures pull down menu and go switch it to our white solid as the source. And nothing will happen at first, but if I go to the second little menu here, I'm gonna change it to effects and masks. Oh, let's actually go turn off that checkbox that says only foreground. So now because I applied masks to a solid that takes up the whole canvas, I don't have to pre-compose it. And so I can manipulate these masks in real time. I can grab onto this mask here and move it around. And you can see that these actually kind of blur together like drops of water. In fact, if we select all of our masks right here and press F for feather, we can increase the feathering, which if you're not sure what that does, that actually just blurs the mask. You can see what happens if I turn off the effect. It just blurs the masks like that. But now if I move the masks together, they'll blend together and kind of squish just like water droplets coming together, which is really cool and really powerful. You can see how fast this is. There's no lag at all. So knowing this, we can actually create some really cool animations. So let's do kind of a little interface animation. So I'm going to delete my three masks and I'll draw a rectangle mask. And you can see it's just updating in real time, which is really cool. If I press F to feather the mask, it will round the edges. And let's say we want to create a dialog box that pops up and then another little corner button pops up over here on the corner. So for that, we're going to also need a circle. I'm also going to feather the mask of the circle too. So let's see if we can create an interesting dialog box opening animation. So the easiest way to do this, I think, is to keyframe it in the finished position that it's going to end up in. So maybe down here around two seconds later, I want it to end up in this position. So I'm going to select both my masks and press M for mask and I can keyframe the mask path. And then let's scrub to the first frame in the animation. And maybe we can kind of collapse this down so that the mask disappears like that. So that's the first one. I think I want the circle to appear after the rectangle has appeared. So I'm going to scrub to about the halfway point of the animation and I'll move the circle mask inside here like that. Now you can see if I scrub back to the beginning as the rectangle disappears, the circle is going to appear like that, which might look kind of cool. Maybe we want it so that this is a button and when you click it, the dialog box opens and then the circle goes up and now that's the close button, something like that. But if you don't want the circle to be there, you can keyframe this mask path to be smaller. Just kind of squish it until it disappears. Normally I wouldn't be this sloppy with it, but I think the organic nature of the shape is going to make it feel a little bit more like water. I never said I was the best UX designer, but the glass plugin makes it look pretty cool, I think. It does a lot to cover up my bad animation skills. Let's select all these and press F9 to smooth out those keyframes. Maybe let's mess with the timing a little bit, make it go a little faster. And if you want to make it feel a little bit more organic, like liquid, maybe after the circle goes all the way out like that, we can have it move back in just a little bit as if there's some momentum. It's kind of like bouncing and wobbling. Pretty cool. Now, if we change our preset to something like frosted glass, now it's a more readable interface and we can put text over this. Speaking of text, I just want to show you that this does work on text. So if I delete that middle layer, you can type out a title or the name of your company or something, put it in between the glass and the background layer, and don't forget to pre-compose it. And then we'll make that the source for the glass. And that looks pretty cool. Let me show you just a couple more features of this before we make something really cool and polished. Once again, I'm going to delete my middle layer and let's once again create another solid. Let's put it down in between the glass and the background layer. And let's apply an effect called fractal noise to that solid. Fractal noise is cool because it generates random black and white noise and you can actually animate it by moving this evolution slider. Go ahead and play around with all the noise types and just pick one that looks cool to you. It doesn't really matter for this example which one you pick. Really quick tip though, if you want to animate this thing without adding keyframes manually, you can alt click on this little stopwatch that says evolution. And then you can type a quick little script right here. I'm going to type in time asterisk and then some number like maybe 300. What that's going to do is just advance the evolution slider for the entire length of the timeline. Pretty cool. All right. Lastly, on our white solid layer, I'm going to create a mask just like we did before. It could be anything you want. Square, circle, it could be type, anything at all. And then I'm going to click on my glass layer and I'm going to set my source to the white solid and hide the white solid. And after you set your source to the white solid, make sure that the second box here says effects and masks. Now here's something really cool that we can do. Because we have that black and white pattern, we can go to this slider right here where it says input luma bump and we can crank that up. And now it's adding that black and white pattern almost as a bump map or a height map to the glass. So you can see as I crank that up, that noise pattern shows up in the distortion of the glass. And if I press play, since it's animated, we get this really creepy effect. We can also tint the glass based on the layer that it's using as a source. Now I already showed you how to change the tint of the glass using this absorption. But if I hide my glass layer and turn my white solid back on, 
we can use whatever color this layer is to tint the glass. And just to show you this, I'm going to do something kind of crazy. I'm going to click on my white layer and I'm going to add the colorama effect. And that's going to change the black and white values to, in this case, a rainbow color. Now, this is kind of an extreme example. If you don't like these colors, you can go to the output cycle menu right here and then change the preset to something like deep ocean or maybe earthenware. Just go ahead and play around with it. Pick a color that you like. Once again, I'm going to hide this layer and turn my glass back on. And then if I click on the glass layer, I can click right here in this little checkbox that says use input as absorption. And now it's actually going to take that color and use it to tint the glass. Now the Fresnel BIOS will actually turn down the tint of that. And now we've got tinted colored glass with an animated bump map. If you want to know about a practical use for these features, check out our previous video where I showed how to make a stained glass window with the Crates Glass plugin. So now that we know how this plugin works, we can make something really cool like this logo animation. All you need is a logo, and it's important that the logo has an alpha channel, so it's transparent around the edges. And you need some sort of a background image or video. I chose this still image just to show you that you don't need a video. And I picked one that's high contrast and has a lot of really cool bright colors in it. Another example of one that could work is maybe a picture of fire, or maybe even a video of sparks rising over a black background. That would look really cool. But I'm just going to use this still image. So let's make a new composition. 1920 by 1080 is fine. Maybe I'll make it five seconds long and I'll drag my background image down onto the canvas. And it's much bigger than the canvas, which is fine. Now let's drag our logo onto the canvas like this. And let's maybe give our logo a little bit of animation, just a little bit of movement. So I'm gonna have it start a little bit small, add a keyframe on the scale. And then as time goes on, it's gonna zoom in and get bigger like this, just for a little bit of visual interest. Okay, let's right click on that layer and pre-compose it. Make sure you move all attributes to the new composition. Press okay, and we'll hide that logo layer. And then just like before, we're gonna right click and add a new adjustment layer. Now let's add crates glass to the adjustment layer and we'll click on texture and change the source to our logo. If we press play, we should see the logo growing and the image refracting through it like glass. Now feel free to play with the settings, but the preset that I used for my example is the diamond preset because it has these really hard chiseled edges, which I think look really cool with the logo as sharp as ours. Okay, now I'm also gonna turn on only foreground right here and you can kind of see the effect happening. If I click and move the background, we get this really cool animated effect. And now it feels like maybe chrome or a gemstone or something like that. Just lots of really cool options with this. So even though it's emulating glass, you can really play around with it and trick it into looking like other materials. Now, one thing I'm noticing though, is when I go to the edge of my image here, it's not completely black. So I'm gonna really quickly add a curves adjustment to make sure that it goes completely to black around the edges like that. And while we're here, maybe we can brighten up these colors like this. Okay, very cool. So let's just animate this now. I'm gonna have it start here on this black corner of the image and I'll press P for position, add a keyframe at the beginning. And then maybe a few seconds later, I'll have it go to the opposite corner like this. Let's press play and see what that looks like. And actually, I think I got a good speed on the first try, but feel free to adjust your keyframes if you need to. One thing that can kind of help is selecting your keyframes and pressing F9 to smooth out the keyframes. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool, but feel free to play with the timing and slow it down if you need to. Now, one last little thing I want to do to just put this over the top is add the Crates Easy Glow effect. And I'm actually going to add this to the adjustment layer just after the Crates Glass effect to make the logo glow. And now it doesn't even really feel like glass anymore. Now, like I said, it's like chrome or some sort of magical gem. Not really sure, but it's very cool. Now that you understand how this works, you can do all kinds of really cool animations. So if you know how to do really cool liquid MoGraph type animations, those work really well with our glass plugin. Now I'm personally not very good with liquid MoGraph animations. So if you are, and you do anything cool with Crates Glass, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or post it to our Discord because I definitely want to see what you come up with. All right, later creators.